Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Void, I'm Brian, your host, and today we're talking about more servants and what the hell is even going on with them. At a base level, heroic spirits and servants are simple concepts. They are prominent, sometimes even legendary or mythical figures of human history. Their lives and their deeds were so impactful that humans remember them centuries or even millennia later. And when a Holy Grail war happens, these heroic spirits can be summoned as servants. Pretty much copies of themselves at their prime, acting as familiars for their masters. Now, that is very easy to explain and to understand. There are some extra details that the explanation does leave out, such as the fact that divine spirits mostly don't count. But the base idea itself is very simple. Though things can get complicated the more you look into it, especially with Nasu throwing in all of his OCs and calling them servants. And so, this video is going to go over explaining demi-servants, pseudo-servants, counter guardians, and a fourth category that I'm going to call alive people that are surprisingly strong, or apt ass for short. There is a fifth category that I'll touch on later, but that's going to get its own video. First, we start with demi and pseudo servants lumped together because they are basically the same thing, but also not really. Both are flesh and blood human beings that have the powers of a heroic spirit. The clearest way that I can explain the fundamental difference between the two is that with a pseudo servant, it's a form of possession. The heroic spirit fully inhabits a presumably consenting person's body who they have a compatible wavelength with. With a demi-servant, it's more like a spirit core of a heroic spirit is forcibly implanted into a living person, kind of making them an incarnated spirit and making the host an outright servant rather than just playing host to one. For this reason, I would count Sieg as a demi-servant of sorts. Like, not officially, but it's the closest thing that I can really say that he is, because that is kind of what happened. Siegfried put his spirit core into a living body, and Sieg is now technically a servant in his own right, though also a master. So, it's not exactly the same as with Mosh being a demi-servant, but it's like a proto-demi-servant, I guess. That's the closest thing I can think Sieg is. One might think that the heroic spirit's personality being in control or not might also be a difference, but as demonstrated with Zhu Liang, that's not really the case. Here we have Waver Velvet playing host to the famed Three Kingdoms tactician, but Waver's personality is in control as they both agreed that this would be the wisest strategy, so no. Servant's personality being in control of the host is not really a factor, though this is a good segue into discussing the positives and the negatives of pseudo-servants from a narrative and fan service point of view. Overall, I do believe that pseudo-servants are a net positive. Yes, people clamor for their beloved characters to be put into the game as they are, but the sad fact is that not every beloved character is servant fighting strong by themselves. Rin Tosaka, for example, is a great mage and a strong one too, but just as she is, Rin would not be able to handle a lot of the shit that goes down in Fate Grand Order. It just makes sense that she would be a pseudo-servant. Plus, it gives a good excuse to use more powerful beings, such as divine spirits in the game, without doing weird stuff like they did with Artemis. Not that that actually stopped them. Though, this also brings up a problem. It makes sense that a divine spirit would have to be a pseudo-servant, lower their divinity and such to make summoning them possible, at least in the Chaldea system. But why are people like Zhu Liang and even more Amasa pseudo-servants? They were just normal, albeit very famous, people who should be eligible for being heroic spirit by themselves. And I know that in the story they do explain that Muramasa's Saint Graf wasn't worthy, but I honestly find that to be a load of bull. You're telling me that one of the most famous swordsmiths in history wasn't well known enough to be a heroic spirit by himself? Just say that he was Shiro's ancestor, and that's why he looks like that, and absolutely no one would question it. It would even be cooler, actually. 
But that's just one side of the problem. The other side is that we have hosts that don't need to be pseudo-servants and should be an aptass, such as Taiga. Though, honestly, she was likely saddled with Jaguar Warrior to keep her from being too strong, you know, as a nerf, so I think I can let that slide. But then we have Bazette, and I'm conflicted. On one hand, awesome! Celtic Pantheon representation. But on the other hand, Bazette by herself is a damn beast. Sure, sure, as a non-pseudo, she wouldn't be able to fire off Fragrock all willy-nilly, so the reasoning can be that she needs the god powers. But I feel like they could have made other reasons for it. And some may say that Dark Sakura is strong enough to not be a pseudo-servant, to which I say that Dark Sakura technically already is a pseudo-servant playing host to the angriest mango. But then we reach the most recent pseudo-servant, Grigori Rasputin. Fun fact, he's not listed as a living human. The man is using Kirei's damn corpse. But more fun than that, as this servant ascends, his damn name changes to Kirei Kotomine. So he goes from just being a pseudo-servant to becoming the final natural evolution of the man known as Father Kire Kotomine. This is his final form. Though at that level, I think that just makes him a normal servant since he's dead and all? Don't know. Now, before we move on to Counter Guardians, I do just want to say that if you are enjoying this video, be sure to like and comment to let me know. And if you want to see more, also be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. It helps me out a ton, and I love you lots. But back on topic, Counter Guardians are a fun one. They aren't traditional heroic spirits, as they are, usually, entirely unknown to humanity. So what's their story? Well, these are people who have made a contract with the world itself to become servants of the Counterforce after their death and protect the balance of the world. The Counterforce can actually summon any servant it wants in response to great disasters, as shown throughout FGO, but Counter Guardians are specifically the heroic spirits that exist because of the Counterforce. The examples here are Emiya Archer, a future version of Shiro Emiya, Emiya Alter, an alternate version of the Archer we know and love, Emiya Assassin, a version of Kiritsuko Emiya that had never met the Einsburns or participated in the Holy Grail War, and then the most interesting one is a temporary Counter Guardian, Okita Alter. Temporary because, by all rights, she's not supposed to exist. She is a version of Okita Soji who, at birth, was basically given to the Counterforce in order to cure her and allow her to live. As these are not the events of proper human history, that never actually happened, so she cannot exist permanently. But the friendship powers of Ritsuka Fujimaru said hold my beer, and so she is a heroic spirit now regardless. Which is further proof that Miyamoto Musashi's spirit origin disappearing with no hope of recovery is total bullshit and a glaring plot hole. There are way too many examples throughout the story of Fake Grand Order where servants that are not supposed to exist after they disappear just don't. Musashi is the only one that they followed through with that and it makes no sense. My soapbox aside, Counter Guardians are pretty simple, straightforward, nothing too crazy. The fourth category though, this is where things get wild, because these are just people. Aptas is filled with people from alternate timelines that are brought in to fight alongside Chaldea, who without even being heroic spirits or even dead. Do they have a spirit core? How the hell does the Saint Graph even work with them? Do command seals even really work with them? All questions that I have absolutely no answers for because this category is really weird and really frightening. But who fills this category? We have Shiki, Shiki, Fujino, the Prilia Gang, Iris Feel, and Grey. Also, Eris, but she's in a subcategory of Aptas called half heroic spirit because she is legitimately half heroic spirit on her mother's side, her mother being the Shinto goddess Izanami. Rightfully, she should be in a fifth category, but I didn't want her to be all alone. But as mentioned before, there is a fifth category to all this, and I call it extra. Here we find Ark, 
Kiara, Bibi, and the Sakura 5, since they don't really fit into being any of the other four distinctions that I've listed so far. They're all kind of their own thing, and the whole category deserves its own video in the future, so look out for that. But for Aptas, they are all characters that can definitely fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with servants. Mystic Eyes of Death Perception alone makes the Shikis a match for most servants, but Saber Shiki also basically being the physical manifestation of the root makes her like unbeatable if she ever cared enough like thank god that she's just a sleepy big sister type fujino's capacity for pure destruction offsets a lot of her weaknesses the prilia gang are magical girls with powers from zeltrich Plus, Miyu has access to her god powers. Really makes you wonder why her skill set sucks so much. Irisfeel is basically the Holy Grail. Also makes you wonder why her skill set sucks so much. And Grey has Rug the Minia, one of the most powerful artifacts in all of the Fate Universe period. So, looking at this lineup, I feel it makes it clear the difference between them and the likes of Waver, Rin, and Sakura, and why the latter would need to be pseudo-servants, even if the choices of heroic spirits don't really always make sense. But still, I know that pseudo-servants are a point of contention with the fan base, so be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Which other Type Moon characters would you like to see come to Fate Grand Order, and which category would you put them in? I'm very interested to find out. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to catch you next time in the void. Later.